February 2nd, 1959, on the frozen slope of the Dead Mountain, nine of the Soviet Union's most experienced hikers are about to die. They tear their way out of their only shelter, fleeing half-dressed into minus 30-degree darkness. They weren't running from a person. They weren't running from an animal. They were running from something they couldn't see and couldn't understand. What they encountered was a perfect natural weapon. For 65 years, the world has been haunted by the unnatural injuries, the radiation scares, the sealed Soviet files. But today, new forensic science and avalanche simulations from 2025 have finally decoded the truth. The answer isn't a conspiracy. It's something far more terrifying. Music swells an immediate cut to title card. This is the story of nine real people, led by the determined Igor Dyatlov. The group included Zinaida Kolmogorova, Rustem Slobodin, Ludmila Dubinina, Alexander Kolovatov, Yuri Krivonyshenko, Semyon Zolotaryov, Nikolai Tibo Brignol, and Yuri Doroshenko. They were the brightest of their generation. Their expedition into the northern Urals was a testament to Soviet exploration. They documented everything. On February 1st, they made a fateful decision to set up camp on the open slope of Kolat Shakal, the Dead Mountain. It was a decision that would cost them their lives when rescuers found their abandoned tent weeks later. The scene was one of orderly chaos. The tent was cut open from the inside, their boots, their warm coats, their food, all left behind. Nine sets of footprints, some barefoot, led away from the safety of their shelter and into the abyss. The mystery had begun. And the official explanation? A compelling natural force. It was a lie, designed to hide an embarrassing and terrifying scientific truth. The first five bodies were found scattered near an old cedar tree, almost a mile from the tent. Yuri Doroshenko and Yuri Krivonoshenko were found in their underwear. Having tried desperately to build a fire, resin on their hands showed they had climbed the tree, perhaps to see the tent or signal for help. Igor Dyatlov and Zenaida Kolmogorova were found closer to the tent, as if they had tried to return Rustem Slobodin had a fractured skull, but not severe enough to be the main cause of death. All five had ultimately succumbed to hypothermia. The initial theory was a panic-induced escape. But panic doesn't explain the calm walking patterns in the snow, nor does it explain what happened to the last four. Four months later, the spring melt revealed the final four hikers in a ravine. Lyudmila Dubinina, Semyon Zolotaryov, Alexander Kolovatov, and Nikolai Thibault Brignol. What investigators found changed everything. Lyudmila Dubinina, massive chest fractures, ribs driven inward, her heart was punctured, her tongue and eyes were missing. Semyon Zolotaryov and Nikolai Thibault Brignol crushed chests and a fractured skull. The paradox, these were injuries equivalent to a high-speed car crash, yet there was no external bruising on the skin. They were broken from the inside out. This is where 1959 forensics failed. They had no model for this kind of trauma. The compelling unknown force was not a monster, it was physics. The old theories, Yeti, missiles, murder, are sensational but unscientific. The new evidence points to a devastating chain reaction of natural forces. Step 1. The trigger, infrasound panic. The Dyatlov Pass has a unique geological shape. When fierce catabatic winds scream down this slope, they can generate infrasound, sound waves below human hearing. At certain frequencies, infrasound induces primal terror, disorientation, and an irrational urge to flee. It attacks the mind. The hikers weren't crazy. They were subjected to an acoustic weapon. They cut the tent because they believed, on a visceral level, that staying inside meant certain death. Step 2. The trauma. The slab avalanche. The hikers fled to the tree line. The four strongest dug a survival shelter in a ravine. But the same weather system that created the infrasound also made the snowpack unstable. New 2025 avalanche simulations prove a small, silent slab avalanche, a dense block of snow, released into that ravine. It didn't bury them deeply. It hit them with the force of a truck. This explains the catastrophic internal injuries with no external marks. The snow block transfers energy 
and then dissipates, leaving no trace of an attacker. The radiation. Trace elements from their kerosene lanterns. The Soviets seized on this to classify the files, hiding the fact that their best and brightest were defeated by a freak, but completely natural accident. The Dyatlov Pass incident was not a single mystery, but a perfect storm. A chain reaction of natural forces. Infrasound triggered the panic. The catabatic winds created the conditions, and a slab avalanche delivered the final brutal blow. There is no monster here except nature itself. These nine experienced intelligent hikers were defeated by a confluence of physics they could never have anticipated. Their story is a permanent reminder that the natural world holds dangers we cannot see and cannot hear. The truth is not a conspiracy, it is a lesson in humility against the raw, unforgiving power of our planet. What do you think? Does this scientific explanation finally put the Dyatlov Pass mystery to rest? Or are there still unanswered questions? Let me know your theory in the comments. If you want to see more cold cases solved with modern science, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. For then, stay tuned for our next video.